Our next speaker served as a captain in the United States Air Force Reserves. He and his wife, Gloria, let's give Gloria a round of applause, Gloria, are the proud parents of two fabulous children, one of whom is here today, Elizabeth. Let's give her a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, Commissioner Larry Suffernan. Commissioner. Thank you, Jay. It's a great privilege to be here. Uh, on Valentine's Day 1973 was the last time I was an officer and a gentleman, and I walked off the Chinook Air Force Base to come back to Chicago. Uh, and you really never went back. Uh, and so this is really exciting to hear about what's happening on that Air Force Base uh, uh, since then, and 42 years later, to see all the positive things that are there. My, my role today is, though, to introduce uh, one of the great supporters of this program, John Cullerton. And uh, I've done this now twice in the last four days, had the chance to introduce John. Uh, one of the little factoids about John that uh, a lot of people don't realize is that because of his short stay in the Illinois General Assembly, he has served with 20% of all the people who have ever served in the Illinois General Assembly over the 200 years. That includes Douglas and, and Lincoln and all those people. Uh, he also has passed more major pieces of legislation than any other legislator in the history of Illinois. When, <laughs> when, when you put your seatbelt on, when you get in your car today, thank John Cullerton for making that possible that everybody puts their seatbelt on. When you put your grandchildren or your children in their car seat, Thank John Cullerton for making sure that would happen. If you're part of an LSC in the city of Chicago, the local school councils, it was John Cullerton who passed that bill. There's so many things that he has his fingerprint on. And the things that he's been interested in, especially when it comes to criminal justice, are things we know he really cares about. I started with him uh, in the public defender's office. He tried his first jury with me, as he likes to point out. Our defendant in that first case is still serving time 42 years later, and we've only testified at eight parole hearings for him, but eventually we're going to get him out, I, I hope. But he learned about humanity at 26th Street, and he's never forgotten what it takes to turn people's lives around. Great privilege to introduce the President of the Illinois Senate, John Cullerton. Well, now you know why I'd like to have Larry Suffern introduce me, right? Uh, thank you, everybody, for, for being here. Um, I am here to, uh, uh, first of all, I think I probably should respond to some of those things that Larry talked about. Um, it sounds like an argument for term limits, uh, <laughs> for having served 20% of the, um, and so, okay, I'll come out in favor of term limits 50 years, and you're, you're done. If you, if you haven't accomplished what you want to in 50 years, you should be out of there. Um, I am here, though, uh, to, and I've been here to give speeches myself. This is a very distinguished uh, audience, and I appreciate your coming. But I'm here to, disting, uh, to, to introduce this panel representing Lincoln's Challenge Academy. So I also uh, was in the military. I was in the National Guard. <clears throat> and, um, but most importantly, <clears throat> excuse me, you know I'm here as the husband of an advisory council member. You know who that is, Pam Cullerton, right? So Pam is here. And, and we are proud in Illinois to know that Illinois operates the largest single-site youth challenge academy in the nation. Uh, this program has a proven track record of helping dropouts and other at-risk at youth to correct their course towards the path of success. Lincoln's Challenge Academy is only able to do this important work with a network of support from parents, mentors, and community and business leaders who commit to sign up, show up, and support the mission of this great organization. Uh, so today, the goal is for you to learn more about this program. Uh, I hope your curiosity would push you to accept our challenge to improve outcomes for the Illinois youth. So if I could <clears throat> introduce um, our panel and, and ask them to come up after I introduce them. Uh, let's start with uh, Colonel Stephen F. Baggerly. He is the Director of Staff, Air Joint Force Headquarters, Illinois Air National Guard in Springfield. His duties range from oversight of staff to acting as Assistant Adjutant General for Air in time of the 
uh, ADJ General, uh, Adjutant General's absence, and uh, he is also the Federal Management and Contracting Officer for Lincoln's Challenge Youth Program. So, <laughs> Colonel. <clears throat> Uh, Brigadier General William D. Cabeto is Assistant Adjutant General, Air National Guard. His broad range of responsibilities include command, control, and operations, as well as ensuring combat readiness and mission capability of Illinois' three major air bases. General Cabeto also supervises a full-time force of over 900 federal and state employees, including personnel at Lincoln's Challenge Academy. Brigadier General Cabeto. <clears throat> Major General Donald Lynn is the former Adjutant General for the State of Illinois. General Lynn was instrumental in establishing Lincoln's Challenge Academy back in 1993, and he serves on the State Advisory Board. Major General Donald Lynn. <clears throat> and Director Peter Thomas, after serving 30 years in the U.S. Army, Director Thomas decided upon his retirement in 1993 to continue in the service of others. He found his home with the, the Lincoln's Challenge Academy in 2000 and was named a director. Uh, the academy, by the way, has graduated close to 15,000 cadets, and of those, uh, uh, close to 10,000 cadets have received their GED while at the academy. Thank you all for your service and commitment, and have a great panel right now. Thank you very much. dropout rate in our country is close to 50 percent. If a foreign power infiltrated the country and disrupted the school system and did things so that young people would not get the education they need to be productive in our society, and we found out about it, we would go to war because that type of activity would destroy a country from within. Well, it's not a foreign power. We're doing this ourselves. Our country is facing an incredible epidemic. It is, it is absolutely a crisis today that we have over 1.2 million students dropping out of high school. If we don't fix that problem, uh, we're gonna have tremendous difficulties down the road. At the National Guard Youth Challenge Program, we turn young people's lives around. In keeping with its mission to maintain the freedom and security of the nation, the National Guard launched the Youth Challenge Program in 1993 to respond to the growing crisis of at-risk youth. Before you challenged Academy, I was a drug addict. I was addicted to marijuana. And now that I've been here at Youth Challenge Academy, uh, this place has given me the motivation to not only change myself, but try to change others and help others out as well. Good job, well done. Thank you, sir. Before coming to Youth Challenge, I felt like I was useless. But now, I feel like I can contribute to society and make a difference. When this young student walks across that stage at graduation day, it's a huge transformation for them. They wouldn't even recognize the student that started day one anymore. So we see this wonderful, beautiful, 
happy, proud, bright, young man or woman with a lot of self-confidence. And then we look out in the crowd and we see tears of joy. It's just a tremendous day. Today's world is a different world. We need the talents and skills of every young person to be developed to their fullest potential to help the country. As of June 2011, more than 100,000 students have graduated from the program nationwide, and 90% of them have received their high school diploma, GED, or have returned to high school. The program operates at an annual cost of only $16,000 per enrollee, saving taxpayers $109 million in juvenile correctional costs and over $31 million in ongoing educational costs. Youth Challenge is succeeding in providing thousands of young people a second chance to be productive citizens. But there is still so much work to be done. Due to funding restrictions, six out of 10 applicants are turned away every year. No child seeking a second chance should ever be turned away. The Youth Challenge program has given me a successful life to look forward to. Everything I could ever dream of, everything I could ever imagine or want is coming true and it's thanks to the Youth Challenge program. We can have solutions to the dropout problem. Everything is at stake and everything is possible. And this is one program that has proven that it can be an integral part of that solution. If this program can help me, it can help anyone out there. Help us help America's youth. Invest in the future. Dream. Believe. Achieve. General Lynn or General Cabeto, do you want to start with kind of the history and where we are uh, on this? Uh, since, General, you were the founder, it's right. important to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I want to thank Senator Cullerton and Pam Cullerton for their support of our program. They've been, Pam has been wonderful serving on the board. She's a very energetic lady. Um, the Challenge program came about kind of a strange way, really. I, in uh, 1991, I was the adjutant general of Illinois, and at the time, I was looking for something for youth. We were spending about three million dollars a year count, cutting marijuana, working with DEA, and so forth in the guard. But we felt it was almost a waste of time because marijuana grows wild in Illinois. Uh, so at the time. I was out in the Pentagon one day, and the speaker that day was Lynn Martin from, used to be Congressman Martin at the time, she was head of the Department of Labor. And uh, she brought the concept up of this youth program. So I came home and I called her the next day because I knew her, I called her, I says, I would like to be the test state. She said, well, we'll keep it in mind. Well, in the meantime, it went on for two years, the process did. Uh, and finally they called one day and said, you still interested? And I said, yes. So Sergeant Major Thomas sitting over here, the Commandant now, him and two majors got locked up in a room for about three months to write the program. But it took a lot of hurdles. Unfortunately, uh, the state government helped, even though it's a 75, 25 paid program, there had to be some state laws changed on liability and some other things. But the program was designed, after I talked to the Department of Education, they told me there's like 40,000 students a year dropping out of high school in <laughs> Illinois, and I said, whoa. I said, this is the way we need to go. So when we developed it, the, we finally got it off the ground in 1993. And it was named in 2001, the Lincoln Challenge Program was renamed the Lincoln Challenge Academy. Currently, there's 29th youth challenge programs in the country. 29 states has this program today. We're, the only, we're still the largest one in the nation right now in a single location. 
The mission of the National Guard Youth Challenge Program is to intervene and to reclaim the lives of 16 to 18 year old high school dropouts, producing pro program graduates with the value of life skills, education, and self-discipline necessary to become productive citizens. When they started this program, they sent the Army Strategic Study Group, which is at the Army War College, and they studied it for about a year. And they said, in order for this program to succeed, it only took 10% of the students to get their GED to pay for the whole program, versus being incarcerated or being on welfare from the time they're working age to retirement age. And so that's why they felt the program Congress did it was so vital to start this program. But when they started it, they put it in the National Guard because we're home-based and locally based. At the time, she knew the Air Force Base was closing in 1993. Unfortunately, we was able to get some of the facilities to run this academy. We're presently building a brand new campus down there uh, that the state is supported. Uh, so the Lincoln Challenge had a vision for the future is to mold the youth of today, and not only in, in GED, but life skills. Many of these kids have been in trouble. Many of them have been in the drug thing. They have to be drug free to go to the school, and we, they get tested periodically to make sure they are. But the success rate is unbelievable, the change in these students. They're taught in a military environment. It's like being in basic training in the Army, except you learn life skills versus military skills. And that's where the, the big change in their life comes. Because most of these kids, if you talk to them, and we've got three with us today, their home lives have not been the greatest in the world, many of them. And the thing you don't hear is always fascinating me. You never hear about dad, you always hear about mom and grandma. So <clears throat> that's where the kids' basis is from. They don't have that image that they can follow all the time. So, General Cabello, thank you, folks. By the way, I know John was uh, an enlisted uh, ranks when he was in the National Guard. Two stars means Major General, not Brigadier. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, General Lynn. Where, are, where we're at today, uh, I'm in the Air National Guard. You wonder the National Guard. We are a joint force, Army and Air. Uh, I currently serve as an Assistant Adjutant General on behalf of General Crumroy, the Adjutant General, uh, appointed by Governor Rauner. Um, I wear my state hat. I'm a state employee, so we, I get to oversee the uh, state funding and the state laws and, and uh, regulations that affect the program. So where are we going? Where are we going? We're in class 44 right now. As was mentioned, we're building a brand new campus thanks to the support of the uh, General Assembly. They have been kind enough to help fund a new facility. When we took over the facilities at Rantoul in 93, they were pretty old and uh, they were dinosaurs at the time. So one of the requirements the federal government has is the state provides the facilities. So. We've been fortunate enough, we're trying to build a very, very uh, energy efficient facility campus right there at Rantoul where we are, so we're still operating while we're building the new facility. To date, we've graduated 14,000 cadets, 230. We have about 225 in this class. So, and of that, we've had 9,000, almost 10,000 receive their GED. Now, you've been reading there's some struggles with the new GED, Illinois. I think the General Assembly has recently passed that they're going to approve two other versions of the high school equivalency or GED. The pass rates were way down. Uh, for those of you that don't know, GED was a name brand sort of, uh, if you want Kleenex, do you get Puffs, Charmin, or Kleenex? And that was uh, bought out by a company, Pearson View, and uh, the test is now automated. The price has increased, and it's a lot tougher to pass. But the big part of it was a computer automation. Many of our cadets do not have access to the computer technology, so we're working hard to get our success rate up over 60%. So the basic eligibility or criteria is uh, 16 to 18 year old in Illinois, we say high school dropouts. Other states have a little definition of what high school, middle school is, but, um, and it's a voluntary program. They volunteer to come at any point they can turn around and quit and go home. 
Uh, we do have a little higher uh, what we call washout rate than we would like, uh, but I still believe a lot of the success is uh, they're scared straight when they go home. They realize how good they had it with, with mom and dad or at home. Uh, currently, we cannot accept court-directed uh, students or cadets. The feds are looking at that to change that, and we want to be on the lead of that where we can accept those that may be heading in the court system, the juvenile system, to accept them. And so we're working that real hard. Drug-free at the time of in-processing has been mentioned, and we do have periodic drug testing is mandated by the federal government of all the students when they go home for break and come back. And then uh, uh, having a mentor is part of the registration and they have to be mentally and physically capable to complete the program. The basic eligibility, as I said, they're all volunteers. We strive for ac academic excellence, life coping skills, computer training. Our cadets do receive uh, community college credit for the computer training, dual credit, like some of the high schools, job school, uh, job skills training, and then we teach them the self-discipline that the military offers, leadership, followership, responsibility, and teamwork. It's mentioned we're, we're compared to a boot camp, but we're not a boot camp. So I'd like to introduce Director Thomas now, and he'll tell you about the program. Good afternoon. I am from the old school. I'm going to try that again. <laughs> if I were down here at a Cubs ball game and said good afternoon, everybody would be hollering. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to try that again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I like that. Sir. I like, I like that. I like that. <laughs> As I said earlier, my name is Peter T. Thomas, the director of Lincoln Child Academy. But before I get started, I want to introduce my deputy director, my executive secretary, and three cadets. At this time, I'm asking my deputy director to stand up. <laughs> my right hand executive secretary that keeps me straight is Jenny Henderson. And we have three cadets here. <laughs> no, no, remain standing. Remain standing. They can talk loud. I want to start over there with the young lady. Tell them who you are and where you're from. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> You've heard a little bit about the academy this morning, but I get excited when I have the opportunity to talk about a program that has been designed to change young men and young ladies and get them back on the beaten path of America. You've heard about the residential phase, but with, there is three parts of the academy, three phases. First phase is acclimation phase, where you come in walking slow, saying I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that, but at the end of the day, that has changed. You are saying yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, and no ma'am. Those are some of the requirements. We, acclimation period is two weeks. During that first two weeks, they have the option of staying or going. But when they see my smiling face, they want to stay. <laughs> Physically and mentally challenged, you heard about that. We evaluate them daily on everything that we teach them, either marching in formation, our military customs and courtesies, and all of the other things to include demographics. Then we talk about the GED. Determination, every young man or young lady comes to the academy with some form of determination. It is up to my staff to get that out of them. Every young man or young lady wants to do good. And if they come with any idea other than that, we change that right away. And as of today, I can tell you that there are young men and women in all walks of life, from teaching to flying aircrafts to doing everything that you can think of, doing great things for this great country. Challenges of our 22-week course there. Uh, we have phase one, phase two, and phase three, and all of them about the same. It's yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Let's talk a little bit about a day at Lincoln Challenge Academy. We're up in the mornings at 5 o'clock. No discussion, not debated. We're up at 5. 5.30, we're outside doing physical training. And on good days, when I feel real good, we run five miles. 
On days when I feel bad and dragging a little slow, it's three miles. So the choice is yours. Either you come out and make me happy and we do five, or you come out dragging and we do three. And on days where I think that you have not got it, maybe we'll go out five miles and come back five miles. Then we bring them into the building, give them a nice hot shower, feed them and get them off to class. Then after they come from class, uh, in that afternoon, they have mandatory study time. I don't believe in radios and TVs in an academy like this. You know, when you come here, you lose that. The GED book is what should be in front of you every living hour of the day. Because you came there because you were having problems. Drilling ceremony, I believe in marching because it teaches discipline. Yes, sir. Yes, it will. <laughs> yeah. It will get you moving in the right direction. You've heard about the life coping skills, uh, the eight core objectives. I'm not going to beat you to death with that and go over it, but I will tell you that one of them is physical training. We, we are very hard and heavy on that. Leadership fellowship. Every young man and young lady has to go through those stages of being a leader. You cannot be a good leader if you can't be a good follower and vice versa. Service to community. You saw where we've done ex ex extraordinary in service to community. We give out a lot of hours. Service to community consists of Head Start, 4-H Club, IDOT, Center for Women in Transition, Eastern Illinois Food Bank, Special Olympics, March of Dime, Age, uh, Office of Aging, Conservation, Neighborhood Cleanups. We do a lot. They get a lot. They get to go many places. In fact, this Saturday, I'll be taking them to the color guard. By the way, we have a color guard, drill team, choir, and we go on and on. So if you got a, a, a program that you would like Lincoln Challenge Academy to come out to, you'd like to see us post colors, call me. If you want to got a program where you want the young men and women to come out and be active in a civic organization, call us. Uh, up, in, up in the design area every year, we go up there, they got a big park out there, and they be cooking hamburgers and hot dogs. I take the drill team, the choir and color guard. We go up there, we, we post the colors. We do the uh, our drill team bit, and then we join in with the neighborhood there and get the cadets out talking about the Lincoln Tower Academy, and then their feet is real good, and then we come back down 57 and get back to Rand 2. So if there's anything, if there's anything in your community Please invite us. We are there. We are ready to come right now. All you got to do is call us, and, and we'll be there. The cost, free. Let me say that again. The cost, the price is right, free. <clears throat> so please look for us and get us there. Now, it is so great to see you here with us today. I'm going to charge you all with the responsibility right now of being drum majors for Lincoln's Challenge Academy. I want you to go out and five, grab five or six people a day and tell them, or ask them, have you heard of Lincoln's Challenge Academy? Have you ever heard of Rand 2? Do you know where the former Chanute Air Force Base is? If you got a young man or a young lady that might have drifted off to the right or drifted off to the left, it is unacceptable because we're marching straight down the road together. Tell them that you know of a place I found out today at downtown Chicago that there is a place I can send your little child and get them squared away. I want you all to be drum majors. I want you to go back and tell everybody about what you've heard and seen here today. Because our, your, your, your retirement depends on who we got behind us coming forward to take our places. And if we don't have anybody behind us, then you cannot even think about retiring. Not, not more or less going on vacation. So I want to fill the house up next class with nothing but a house full of young men and young ladies who want to do the right thing, who wants to be involved, and who wants to come back to the communities and be productive citizens. We can do this. This is our United States of America. Let's get behind it. Let's move forward. Let's tell everybody about the good news you heard here today. Thank you very much. Colonel, by, by, by the way, uh, Ma Major Thomas, did you say we run five miles yes, a day? Yes, sir, we. Uh, that, you does it, you do it. He does it. Oh. Uh, I, I, Saturday morning, you meet me there, we'll go together. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll be there, I'll be there. I'll be there Saturday morning. She'll Sh noodle the same place. Yeah. Yeah, same yeah. way. Uh, I'll be there on the five miles back. <laughs> See there and agree to them. Yeah. Uh, next slide, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now you know why I hate, I always want to go first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really hard to follow Peter T, I'll tell you. So anyway, my name's Colonel Baggerly. I'm the federal program director for Lincoln's Challenge. I'm not technically Peter's boss, but I guess I am on the federal side. And uh, we, we spend a lot of time talking on the phone, and I, I do spend a lot of time around Tool. It's an hour and 40 minute drive for me, but uh, I, I drive over there at least every t once every two weeks, and sometimes I even get a hotel and stay overnight and uh, work issues with, with Peter T. Uh, I'm up here to talk a little bit about, you know, when cadets graduate, uh, graduation is in June this year if you're interested, it's in Springfield, Illinois, and we do need a guest speaker, so just throw that out there. <laughs> so it's at the Prairie Capital Convention Center. Um, we're privileged to have the Illinois Community College Board is on board with us and they offer, uh, last class we graduated, they offered about 30 scholarships to our cadets to attend community colleges and I appreciate the work that the Senate and the uh, House do on that to, to fund that. And uh, we give these uh, community college grants away to uh, cadets who have proven that they have the academic skills to go to college and, and hopefully graduate. So there's about a thousand renewable scholarships for up to uh, four semesters that we give out. And uh, our representative down at uh, Springfield is Susan Drone, if anybody knows who that is. But um, we also give out uh, a Pepsi scholarship of $500 at graduation, a Harry E. Reed scholarship for $500, the Challenge of the Youth for the Day, which is our 503, is it 503C? 501C3. 501 uh, fundraising arm, they give away two $1,000 scholarships to our cadets. And then the valedictorian and the salutatorian are given a NGB National Guard Bureau scholarship of $5,000 and $3,000 respectively. So there is a lot of um, funding that comes with this. Um, uh, so that, that's a great thing for us. Next slide, please. Uh, mentoring. Mentoring is something that uh, we need help in. Uh, we have uh, classes that come in on Saturday morning. I, I attended the last mentorship class, and not every cadet has a mentor, which is uh, one thing that we need to work on. So if any of you would like to be a mentor, we would gladly accept your application. Uh, and our mentors are generally from the neighborhood area that a lot of times the cadet will know the mentor and sometimes they do not. Uh, the mentor uh, is essential in the post-residential phase to make sure that the cadet is still uh, guided, focused, going down that lane that Director Thomas talked about so that they don't end up back at the street corner uh, doing the bad things they did before, but they just do it in a more disciplined way. So, but, um, so, the, the mentors that we are looking for that we have, actually, we have some very good mentors. They have to be a positive role model for the cadet. They uh, reinforce their continuous development. They look out for them, they advise them, and they guide them down their path, whichever one that is, whether it's a vocational skill or a college or you know fatherhood, motherhood, whichever one that they choose to do. Um, we, like we said, um, one person I want to mention is Vicki Scott. Could you stand up? Vicki is a mother. <laughs> if you have any questions about the, uh, how successful this program can be, uh, talk to Vicki because she has two children that graduated from Lincoln's Challenge, a son and a daughter. The son is finishing law school, if any of you lawyers are looking for a law clerk or uh, apprentice. And, his, and her daughter uh, works at Sodexo, and they were both in the Air Force for a short period of time. So Vicki is here today. I wanted to recognize her. So um, <laughs> the, the three cadets that we have today, I'm sure you all have mentors, correct? So how, they're important to you, are they not? Yes. So there you go. Thank you. Uh, lastly, uh, I'll talk a little bit about you know, why are we here today? I think Pete covered a lot of it, why we're here today. We're looking for people who will uh, advertise the program, promote the program, be involved in the program. Uh, one thing that uh, 
we would like to see is all everybody in the room, if it's possible, to become an advocate of Lincoln's Challenge, to know about the program. If you know of a child who uh, needs direct direction or needs to come to the program, let us know. If you want to sponsor some of our programs, come be a guest speaker. Every Monday or every Saturday uh, at Lincoln's Challenge, we have a get-together of all the cadets in the gymnasium, and then we're always looking for a speaker to come, a motivational speaker to come down and talk about um, what they've done and how they can help cadets. Uh, we also are... Uh, Successful at placing some of our cadets at Kraft Foods in Champaign-Urbana. They've gotten jobs there as they graduated. So that's a good thing. That, and we're looking for that. Uh, my goal before I retire on 31 July is at least to open the door to some businesses uh, to uh, maybe uh, bring them in as apprentice pipe fitters, linesmen, things of that nature for the cadets that don't want to go to college that would like to learn a vocational school skill. Uh, we do partner with the Illinois Department of Employment Security so that they are able to log into the system and look at what jobs are available for those things. So, And lastly, I'd like, like to say good seeing Dave Stryker today. Worked together uh, years ago on the BRAC program at the 183rd when we lost our 16s. And Brandon Bador, he's here too. So good to see you all both again. So that's that's all I have. Thank you. We, we have time for a few questions. Um, I'm getting to do the Paul Green routine here, so there, usually there's cards, but we don't have cards. So anybody has a question, if you want to stand up, or if you want to think about having a question, I want to ask, what's the youngest uh, child that is in the program? Age 16, sir. 16. 16. 16. And the oldest child? 18. 18. And you know, we, we have a boot camp here in Cook County, but boot camp for us is really much older children who are serving adult sentences. Right. This is a very unique program dealing with at-risk youth. Right. And, and I think it's, it's the one thing I, that you said, I brought Judge Tooman along, because I, I was trying to get our uh, juvenile court people interested. And you said, you're not taking referrals from the courts, but what we need to do is to get the state's attorney's office to defer prosecution, and then Absolutely. we could get people to come to you. And, and I, 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 in, in Evanston, we have our own uh, public defender office, which is the James Moran Center. And Patrick Keenan Devlin from that office here, he told me the other day that he's had two children from our Evanston community that have gone through the program. So I, this is something I think we need to become the drum majors for, to uh, let people know it's out there as an alternative. And it's very different than some of the alternative high schools that are available to school districts. So questions? Yes, Kathy Moore. Um, Uh, Rantoul is about an hour and a half south down uh, 57, Champagne. and it's about 20 miles north of Champaign. Um, it's how we a get suburb of Champaign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, uh, I think how we get, we get a lot of our cadets through word of mouth uh, from previous cadets who have graduated, and they know somebody who's having trouble, so they'll say, hey, you know, there's this program. We also get... Uh, cadets from the school counselors that we work with and we have seven regional uh, recruiters right now that that go out and recruit in the area uh, we have one two up in the Chicagoland area one's stationed at Donnelly Armory over on Cermak kind of by the uh, McCormick place and then the other one is at North Riverside Armory which is a f little bit farther I believe to the west so yes ma'am Hey, you're welcome. Um, I understand that students have to be mentally and physically able. Uh, however, obviously, it's a federal program, the state program, so you have to meet the requirements of the ADA. So yes, what kind of accommodations do you provide for some students to be able to, to be successful? Well, if they fall under a health umbrella, mm -hmm. then we will make all of the exceptions that we possibly can. For an example, some of the kids need nebulizers, some of the kids need uh, 
under the ADA, we cannot discriminate, so we have to, we, we accept everybody. In fact, we've had young men, uh, I can remember about three classes ago, there was a young man came there with a prosthesis, uh, his right leg, and every night he'd come down to my office, where is my leg? <laughs> Where is your leg? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the kids upstairs has, you know, they have moved, you know, they're, they're, they're <laughs> play, playing a, a joke on him, you know. But uh, he stayed there and, and graduated. And we've had uh, uh, one young man came there with a prosthesis, and, and uh, he, was one of the, he was one of the fastest runners in the academy for that particular class. So whatever the needs of that young man and that young lady is, we will go the extra mile to ensure that we are in compliance with ADA standards, and we will accept that young man, that young lady. Uh, some young uh, individuals come there that can't do certain uh, exercises. Well, we put them on a profile, and hopefully by the end of the, uh, near the end of the class that, you know, they have decided that, hey, I can do 25 push-ups. You know, this is good for me. You know, so we, I hope I answered your question. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'd like to ask General Lynn, when you started this program, did you ever think it would have this many graduates and still be going with this strength uh, 22 years later? No, I didn't. And the thing about it is, it's probably the greatest thing I did in my life, and I've done a lot of things. But this is probably the greatest satisfaction I've had out of my life is this program. Very, very proud of it. Patrick? Well, We've got a congresswoman coming to the city club on Monday. We can spend some time talking to her. <laughs> we, yeah, I'd say yes, working with the state uh, legislators. Uh, they, they have been instrumental in helping us uh, take juveniles in the juvenile court system and tying the federal funding to it through the Department of Labor on some initiatives for our graduates. So just being an advocacy uh, and ensuring the federal legislators are aware of the program and very supportive. And then when they start scratching, they, they will uh, get on board with some of these initiatives. So thank you. Yes. Currently, we, we do have the eight recruiters around the state. About 60% are from the Chicago area, the Chicagoland area. Um, and then the rest are all throughout the state. We, we do pick up some from the St. Louis area. Uh, Missouri does not have a program, so we can accept those students. But they come from all over the state. Uh, majority of them are from this area, 60%. And, and then, uh, it surprises you, though. You'll see them from all the way down in southern Illinois, uh, all over the state. It is our goal to make this a state, 100% state academy. In order to do that, I want there are young men and women coming out of Peoria, Rockford, Aurora, East St. Louis, Moline, uh, Springfield, Decatur, uh, Carbondale, all the way down. Uh, it is my hope that somebody in here today is going to invite me to come be on a TV program, a radio program next week so I can get the word out all over the state. I'm sure there's somebody in here got that hookup, got that connection, so we can hook up, show up, and shout up, and tell the state about this academy. And that's all, that's all we need, but it's, it's all over, man. Peter, the WBEZ is sitting in the back, uh, so we'll make sure we put them in <laughs> touch know, with you. Yeah, yeah. We have a question over here. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, on the IT, uh, we have two computer labs, and that is a, a big part of the program. They can receive college credit for that. Uh, that's a continual battle, keeping up with the technology. We're 75% federal funded, 25% state. Currently, we're on the federal backbone system for IT, so we are meeting all the standards of the federal government. 
And we've had industry partners who've helped in the past with donating old computers. And that now we're sort of having to back off that because we have to buy the new ones, have them in, imaged. Uh, but the technology is, is a big area where our funding, a lot of our funding goes to keep up with that. But uh, that's a big part of the program, and it's increasing. And for the part about the art and other programs, while we try our very best to implement that, uh, I have to use whoever's on staff because uh, or either accept volunteers to come into the academy to do things. I think there's an art festival called the Bones, Bone Festival or something like that. And uh, we, we work throughout the state, right, starting in uh, Champaign-Urbana with that program. We would love to do more. Uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs offers a very good art program, but they don't send you an instructor. They tell you, they send you all of the documentation out and everything and tell you uh, it's here for you. It is, but because I'm operating with a limited staff sometimes, I cannot do everything that we would love to do. But if you would like to send up a volunteer for the arts, I can start it tonight. <laughs> what percentage of your students are young women and what percentage are young men? Our percent of young women is probably 25%. Okay. And the other 75% is men. We want to increase that. I'd love to have 50-50. General, you were going to say something. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I'm curious, do you have any statistics on the graduates and what they do next about their Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in the post-resident phase, we are required to, uh, first of all, every cadet is required to have a mentor. We have a uh, post-resident section set up, case managers, that tracks the young men and young ladies from uh, graduation uh, for the next 12 months. This has been a 17-month program we got on that 12 months. But we go a step further than that. We track them until we just can't, cannot track them any longer. We have young men and women that are flying helicopters. You know, uh, we have young men and women that are in there. Someone talked about the medical field earlier back here today. We have young men and women in the medical field. They are, they are everywhere. And it's because of individuals like you who gives us that support and want to make sure that we get our young men and women going in, in the right direction. When the bright light of hope grows dim, that is when you and I come in, grab these young men and women by the collar, and say, young man, young lady, it's time to get your act together. That's why we're here today, just to make you aware of what we're doing. And all of you all, as the, uh, my boss said here earlier, Colonel, talked about uh, our programs. We have programs. Uh, on every program. We have Women History Month program. Uh, the Holocaust is coming up. We have that program. We enlighten the young men and young lady in the academy on everything possible. So uh, we are having a Memorial Day program on the 23rd of May uh, to recognize all of the young men and women who have uh, paid the supreme sacrifice. We've had four, five young men that graduated from Lincoln Challenge Academy that died on the battlefields in Iraq. So we will honor them this uh, May the 23rd with a nice Memorial Day program at the Academy. And you all are invited. And bring a friend with you so they can see what we are doing. Go out and grab five people a day and say, I've heard it. Thank you. Did I answer your question? I, uh...